Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and welcome back to the ne to the next uh, movie review and back to reviewing the term the, uh, the Terminator uh, series. And since the first the first two movies I enjoyed, first one still my, still still my favorite. Second film is a very damn good sequel. Many consider it better than the first one. This is the, one of the best sequels of all time. Fully understand that, but I still think the first one was still better in my in my view though, because I still liked how. It has the this it is more it's it's a more of a horror slasher film, that vibe you know so. And um, but I still I still thoroughly enjoy Terminator Two. It's still classic, damn good classic still. So, and now uh, reviewing that uh, probably which um, which all oh, is is of um, Terminator Three, Rise of the Machines released in two thousand three. No, I, st I stammered that for a second because I was to uh, say that, um, well, I'll say the next film is a step down, definitely so, but you know what? I don't think it's not as bad as people make it out to be, though. I mean, <laughs> I mean, this is the T3, T uh, you know, as I would say, is definitely a lot better than Genesis and then Dark Fate, let alone Dark Fate, you know, so... <laughs> I mean, was it, is it better than Terminator Salvation? I mean, I don't mind Terminator Salvation. I I can watch it, although I can watch I can still watch Terminator Salvation more than Genesis and Dark Fate though. But I mean, Christian Bale. I mean, I like though, but he's still kind of when he's John Connery's talking like that. You know, like he's still doing his Dark Knight impression. You know, his Batman impression. So. But uh, I can still watch Terminator Salvation over those two shitty sequels. But Terminator Three: Rise of the Machines, I still think it's a step. It's definitely a step down from the first two easily, though. But I don't think it's not as bad as people make it out to be. There is a, there is, yeah, there. It's it's flawed. It is. But there is, but there's, but there's still plenty of things I liked about the movie that makes me like it more. You know, more than I would say above average. I still think it's. I can still watch it. More than it's more than it's like it's more than a time waster. I can still watch it, and it's um more like a fun B movie, you know. Because I don't like I said, there's things I did. There's a, there's plenty of things I still liked about the movie, and yes, it's flawed, like I said though. But I don't think it's not as bad as people make it out to be. Still though, I still think it's pretty decent, to say the least. Pretty decent, I would say. I mean, you got Arnold Schwarzenegger coming back as the Terminator, a different version though, because it's a different version of himself, obviously. And I guess during and, and during this and during this time when he did this film, he was in his early fifties, you know. Whether well, he was like 52, 53. <laughs> um, so he comes back. Um, the director this time is Jonathan Mastow, which um, he he directed. He did direct it. He did direct um the the Kurt Russell film Breakdown, which I enjoyed. From from Dino from Dino Dino De Laurentiis, Jonathan Maslow directed that film. Good, solid uh, Kurt Russell film. He's trying to find his missing wife, and you know, and what these truckers are doing. They're, they 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 done this kidnapping thing for a while, you know. Decent decent villain from the late J T Walsh. Um, I I enjoy Breakdown, and then he also and then Jonathan Maslow also did the the submarine film U um, five U five seven one. With uh, Matthew McConaughey, Bill Paxton, rest in peace, Bill Paxton, and Harvey Keitel. I didn't mind that U five seven one. Didn't mind it. I thought there's another film he also directed. I just forget though. But um, I know he directed those two films for sure. But um, yes, he's not James. He's not James Cameron. He's he's definitely not James Cameron for, for in in this film, but for making for making this film. But at least as a fun B movie, you know, I could I, I still think he did a very decent job though. So, and I definitely know there's a big difference in, in the score by, I mean the score the two score the first two scores by Brad Fidel were amazing, great, you know, and I know this is the, the the score in this one was definitely a huge step down. And it's done by Marco Bal Marco Baltrami, which he's done a lot of scores for films I've I've, I've seen. I know he, he I know he did a score he did the score for the fourth Die Hard film, Live Fear or Die Hard, which I enjoyed that score. Um, 
He also did the score for the first for Resident Evil. He's done scores for many other for many movies, you know. So, but I know the score is definitely a huge step down from the from the Brad Fidel's great scores in the first two films, definitely. But and um, I would say it's not awful. I just think it's 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 not it's it's definitely not the easily not the same as Brad Fidel's great scores. Um, Stan Winston's uh, Stan Winston's uh, his his effects team they come back to do the uh, the uh, Terminator makeup and animatronic effects. Um, there's still a decent amount of practical stuff in this as well. And as for the supporting cast, you have um, Nick Stahl. He plays John Connor in this. And a lot of people seem to hate, um, a lot of people seem to hate uh, his performance as John Connor. I don't get why. I think Nick Stoll. I think he did a, a very decent job as John Connor. I think he really does. There's a lot of things that he says I really liked, you know. And um, I just never thought he, I thought he was a pretty decent John Connor. I always thought he was a decent John Connor. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Of course, there's a difference between him and Edward Furlong because Edward Furlong was a, was a more of a child actor though, but. I mean, Edward Furlong was good as John Connor, though, but I think Nick Stoll, I thought he was also played a very decent John Connor as well. I don't get what what was people did not like about him, though. Because there's, there's a lot of things, that plenty of dialogue things that I uh, did like about what he said, you know. So. And then you, then you got uh, Claire Danes, which she would later star on in the TV show Homeland. Um, she plays Catherine Brewster, who, li who later revealed that she is... John Connor's future future wife. I thought she was decent as well. I mean, she was not terrible. I mean, I, I mean, I saw I saw this in the theater. I, I saw this in the theater back in two thousand three, and, and it was also one. It was also one of the few times I saw a movie with my uh, cousins from my dad's side. Right. Um. It was one of the few. It was there was only two films that I saw with my me and my brother saw with my cousins. From my dad's side, right? My dad's side of the family. Um, it was this film, and it was Eight Legged Freaks. Cause Eight Legged Freaks was 2002. This, uh, so, this was 2003, so it was one of the two times that me and my cousins saw. Uh, we we went to the theaters to see Eight Legged Freaks and this film. Just to let you know. But I was saying that even back then, uh, when I saw first saw it, Claire Danes, I think that she was not that terrible as um, Catherine Brewster. Not that terrible at all, and then you got um, Christina uh, Christina Loken, who plays the, a female Terminator by the name of TX, and I get it. I get it. It's like it's, it one, it's one of the things that's trying to be different. You know, this time you having a female Terminator. I never thought that was a bad idea. Never, I never, never, never thought that was a bad idea. I think Christina Loken. I think she did the best that she could as um, the TX. I never thought that she was horrible. You know, yeah, yeah. It's a female Terminator, so it's a little bit different. I thought never she wasn't she wasn't that bad, horrible acting wise. Yeah, yeah. She's not on the same level as Arnold in the first film, or she's not even the same level as Robert Patrick in, in T two though. But I think Christina Loken. I think she was very decent as the TX. So, and then among other supporting cast members, you have you have David Andrews who starred in Stephen King's Graveyard Shift, which I. That's one of the uh, one of my top uh, five favorite Stephen King movies. Underrated movie, uh, Stephen King's Graveyard Shift. David Andrews starred in that. I also remember he was in this episode of CSI, the one from Las Vegas, with William Peterson, where I remember in there was this robbery in the supermarket, and David Andrews he was a cop. So I, I like David Andrews. I say, I've seen him playing other stuff as well. So. Um, he plays he plays as, as um, Claire Danes' father, who runs um, the cybernetic researches, helped it that developed Skynet. Um, and then of course you have um, or was it Earl Bo Earl Bone who played Doctor Silverman from the from the first two movies? He's the psychiatrist. First, didn't believe uh, Michael Bean, uh, Kyle Reese, so think he's crazy until when the, in the Institute in T two when he saw when Robert Patrick went through the bars and he was like, what? And just runs right past him. So he has a cameo in this as well. But overall, yeah, I I I, I think that this is a still this is still to me. Well, last year it would have been twenty years, or so but now this year would be twenty one though. But still, I'll count this as sort of an anniversary review though. But um, 
I still think it was a very decent movie. Still, I still, I still, it's uh, to me, it was never a terrible movie. Never, and that's what it's not. It's not a rant. I never, I never hated this movie. It has a lot. It has a lot of good merits on its own level. Not, the, not in the same league as the first two, though, but on its own terms. So, so okay. The, the story is you have you have uh, Nick Stoll as John Carner. Um, he does he does a lot of the narration. He does the narration of this film, which other than said his narration was fine. Um, you no, know, like it's been t it's over ten years since the, since the second film. He's he's living like off the radar, off the grid, right? Because even though he thinks he stopped judgment, he stopped judgment day. He thinks he's si he should have been safe though, but he keeps on going, living with living just on his own, on the run still, right? And you get a, you get a quick flashback, you get a, a flash forward to the future. If when when the if they did win over the machines, you see him a little bit older with the same with the scar. Although I still prefer. The say this uh, the guy the older John Connor from the the start of the second film I just like the I like how the way that John Connor that older John Connor looked though, but yeah, you see you see just a little bit uh, older an older Nick Stoll in this you know cheering with his comrades with the ruined American flag that's still America they won right they won against the machines he's up there cheering you know yeah that they won over the, they won over the machines right. Yeah, de decent, uh, making him decent, like uh, make effect, make how making him look a little bit more older. He's a little more gray hair, and but the same with the scar on his face still. And so, and then so that so he he's still running, he, although he crashes his bike. He saw a deer, so he goes to this vet to get some medicine. This uh, veterinary 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 place to get some medicine for himself. But in the meantime, you have the TX played by Christina Loken. Kills this woman to get her car, and um, she's uh, seeking out uh, targets, future targets, which, which later they would they would they would be um, John Connor's a uh, future lieutenants, with what Arnold explains, his future lieutenants. So those are the, she seeks out those targets. One of them, among them, is Claire Danes. Um, but first, but like, and uh, first. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like she goes to this billboard because she's there's a cop pulls her over. She try looks at this billboard and kind of like enhances her bust a bit. <laughs> but then she starts killing people, um, like this guy in this drive through, and um, even even a even a, a young teenager, you know, um, which they'll be later in the future, right? So he kills them. So he, he shows he, she is showing that she's not mess she's not messing around. That's what she does. She's a terminator. So, but she's killing basically kind of like kids, basically. And then, then's when Arnold arrives. You know, cool to it's cool to see, cool to see him come back. Um, of course, it. This is why I mean, the start of the a step down from the definitely one to step down from the from the first two because he walks into this ladies' club right, this male strip joint right, and the one thing that one thing is that the the humor in this film overall is not good at all. I mean, yeah, there was a couple of things I did get I get a chuckle out of though, but overall the human the humor was not that funny. I mean, especially the whole scene. Of course, one thing is to remember that Arnold Burns does this movie is the whole talk to the hand thing. I know that to me that was never funny. But but we see he sees this, this male stripper wears the clothes he, he wants, you know, and he tells him to give me your clothes, and the guy what he learns he says talk to the hand, and he does even he even brings it closer to talk to the hand. He's like now. And then he's putting those those these these weird glasses, the, the those star glasses. Yeah, this is like why the star of like a, why a little bit is, why it's a step down from the huge um step down from the from the first two, right? <laughs> but then like uh, Claire Danes, um, she has a fian she has a fiance, so she she just called him to work, and she finds John she finds John Connor at first not knowing who he is though, um. Puts him in a cage until she realized that is John Connor, saying that they went to the junior high, because apparently they knew each other and they met. They, they met. They kind of hooked up the day before. They hooked. They kind of hooked up the day before. Um, before John Car before John met uh, Arnold in the second film. So it was like the day before. It was the day before he met him. And 
of course, there the, she references about his his murder foster his his murder foster parents. The TX Rise shoots this woman. That's not that's not um Catherine Brewster. Like how like how some of his uh, it's it's, it's malfunction it's, it's fun how it's one of its functions like like she can when she can taste the blood it can read the DNA of who the person is. Um, and when she finds the patch of um a, a, a bloody bandage on the floor, licks it, identifies it as John Connor. I guess like this, I guess this she, I, I find this Terminator. I guess this Terminator had a little bit of a reaction to it because when she finds it's the primary target, John Carter, she has like that shock look on her face, like, you know, I'm like, first time I see a Terminator have like a little emotional reaction right there, like she looked just like shocked that it's John Carter because, because because John Carter has been off the grid for so long, all of a sudden he pops up now, <laughs> and then all arrives, runs her, runs her over. Puts Cap, uh, Claire Danes into a truck, finds John Connor, not to kill him but to make him live, to, so he can live. Tells her, tells him to get out. And it's when, when um, the the TX has a little bit like 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 the T one thousand Robert Patrick, you know, with the liquid metal. Like when he shoots, when all it shoots her, it shoots like it has that uh, that liquid metal, like how would how Robert Patrick would get shot, right? Which he went to the TX gets shot, kind of kind of looks like a little bit like that as well. But she's not full. She's not liquid metal. She's a robot underneath, though. But it has like a little bit of liquid metal when he, she gets shot, right? And when she you can use it to re um, regenerate the the skin, you know. And she's also fully cool with a much a uh, uh, much uh, bigger arsenal. Like she can fire this, make her arm into like this this cannon, you know, just blast Arnold. And I also like the idea that um, she can also one of her things she can do she can control machines. For instance, like she can use her finger and make just like this thing and stick it in, and she can control like the especially the vehicles, uh, the cars. Because she can control those. So I do like that. Mind the idea that she can like okay, a little bit different uh, in this in this Terminator's abilities, right? She can control ma other machines, right? So she can uh, control the vehicles. And uh, you do, and, you, and one thing, one of the big things I like about the one, one of the best things about this uh, film is the whole this whole car chase scene. Where the, of course the TX is like driving this big huge crane, and a lot of it, it causes a, a there was a lot of destruction in this whole this whole big car chase. You know, definitely de definitely the budget on the screen. What this the film cost like about two hundred million, or maybe a little bit less though. But it's still expensive. You can still see this whole budget on the screen, especially when it comes to this big huge car chase. I mean, I mean um. A lot, a lot of destruction. Veal, uh, a lot of explosions. Vehicles are being destroyed, um, and this whole thing, when the whole thing with the crane, you know, just causing a lot of destruction. You know, vehicles being blown up, flipped over, um, buildings being destroyed, and a lot of it, and a lot of it is done for A lot of it for real, you know. A lot of it is done practically, which I do appreciate. Okay, it's like okay, it's definitely I can see this whole. Pretty much this whole entire car chase is pretty much all done for real. Very little CGI. And uh, Arnold and when Arnold's and Arnold's on it's on the hook, um, on the crane hook, right? And then he goes and goes and kicks over the am this one of the, one of the cars being controlled, this ambulance. He's on the hook, he's on it, it goes and just kicks the ambulance over. That was pretty cool too. Goes and just kicks it over. And then um and then while uh, while uh, John Connor's driving the car, Claire Danes is still in the back, right? She's being, you know, bounced around inside, you know, <laughs> and and then when um, Arnold's still on the hook, but he gets um, the TX makes him get hit by a, a fire truck, right? I did, I did get a smirk where um where where he he's off he gets slammed by the fire truck, and then um, Christina Loken, the TX, right? She kind of like kind of like sm uh, smirks at that. She's like. Okay, so that that the, this TX did have a little bit of a, a sense of humor, right? He he makes him get makes Arnold get hit by this fire truck, and kind of she kind of smirks. I did guess I did guess uh, a chuckle out of that as well. So he um he gets the fire truck, and then uh, Christina Loken with her with her hand cannon blows up the fire truck. Mm. Yeah, sorry, blows up the fire truck. Another good explosion, and. Gets her off, and then he cal and Arnold calculates to put the crane, the hook of the crane, in this manhole, and she when she tries to get back in, um, the whole thing just the whole vehicle, the crane vehicle just, poof, 
and I do admit, and I do admit, yeah, when the when the whole crane vehicle when it flips up, it this that's off. It's obvious CGI, and that part does not hold up though. I will give it that. Like when the whole crane, like I said, when the when the crane vehicle, the whole crane truck, whatever, when it flips over, the CGI is still iffy on that though. It still doesn't does not look good to this day. Still, I will give it that though. That is still that is obvious CGI. So they so they get away for now. Um, Arnold explains about the TX and the and one thing I did not like about it. Uh, one thing I say one thing is to step down because even though he's, uh, John Carter says you know T two they stopped Judgment Day. Arnold goes and says you know you're only postponed it. Judgment Day is inevitable. So it kind of leaves the leaves the whole thing the ending of the second film kind of pointless because you know what, the whole thing with Sarah Connor Linda Hamilton saying you know no no fate of what we make right kind of makes the whole ending pointless. So that that is that is an issue I have with it. T three kind of makes T two pointless because yeah they blow up Cyberdyne all that though but still it doesn't matter because Judgment Day is will come no matter what basically. So that 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 part. I still have an issue with though, but the thing is though it can't get it can't get any worse than what Terminator Dark Fate did. Dark Fate, you know, it is it's not it can't it's not any war it's not any worse than what that film did because Terminator Dark Fate that makes T two utterly much more utterly pointless, bullshit pointless to, the, to that level you know because Terminator Dark Fate makes Terminator two very pointless. Because oh oh the whole time I guess John um, John Connor he was on the one to protect the whole time it was this girl she's the future now I'm like you just you just basically so that, uh, you just basically yeah Jimmy Cammy because he produced that Terminator Dark Faith movie and Linda Hamilton looked bored out of her mind and oh so he produced it so what's Jimmy so James Cameron so you made your own one of the you just basically shit on the fans who are huge fans of yours of one of the because you consider the best sequels ever and you just shit on that your own movie making John Connor protecting John Connor was pointless now it's this girl that he's protecting now she's the future now I'm like fuck you Jim Jimmy Cammy you know James Cameron you know you know, were you just, were you just trying to upset your, the fans, your, your pe uh, people who enjoy your your T uh, two your film that much? You know, were you trying to piss off those people? Which, by the way, I'm glad that film bombed. You know, because since that film bombed, there's been no future development I've heard of about any upcoming Terminator movies. And besides, Arnold's too old now; he's done playing Terminator. That film just pisses me off more. You know. Yeah, I guess yeah. The, like here, like the the plot here in T three, like it kind of makes the ending of T two uh, kind of pointless though. But the thing is though, Dark Fate just basically just shits on T two more though. And that's what pisses me off more. And and Terminator Genesis is not much is no better either because because the more of the humor you have give Arnold and doing a mug shot, you know, smiling with a mug shot with um oh bad boys, what you gonna do now? Those those I mean. This is why this film is a lot, uh, yeah, it's flawed though, but I think it's, it's a lot better than Genesis, or Genesis Shits, or Dark Fate, Dark Shit. <clears throat> so yeah, I just broke out that bullshit right there. <sighs> anyway, off tangent there, but moving on. But you do get some more pr good, decent practical effects from Stan Winston, where Arnold opens up his chest, and you have the, the more robotic effects, right? It's like... He's like he's explaining he explains he has, he has two hydrogen fuse fuel cells one was damaged, very good practical effects were, he opens his chest up and the whole thing the whole robotic inside was very well done, definitely a well done practical effect right there, he tosses one out and it explodes, and then he gets a, and um, I do get did kind of chuckle this one joke because, what he he says relax and he tells um, Claire Danes, relax. I did I chuckle at that, but then you get the, 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 the stupid humor where they're at a gas station, and Arnold's just taking shit, right? And then leaves all pain, and then he tells the clerk, talk to the hand. Yeah, that's the yeah that's the yeah that's the one joke I still don't think it's not funny, because 
because yeah, you have Arnold from from team from the first two Terminators, and you lead. And this time you have him going talk to the hand with some funky, no, the funky music playing. That just didn't. That still did. That didn't doesn't fly with me though. Still doesn't. It's still this uh, uh, not a not so good joke. Still, D more of a sucky joke. Still. And so this one, John and John Connor is trying to exp is trying to explain to um to Catherine to Kate about the future, um what he is, and you do and, and um and, and you do get in some more d decent dialogue where um John Con John Stark is trying to explain to Kate like I was like, you know, maybe you know you were um, meant to do something important, right? Probably the only import the only important thing that you ever do in your life, but something has to happen. But there's a catch. Something terrible has to happen, and then he tells us like, you know, all this, all this that you take for granted, it's not, it's not gonna last. Decent, de decent uh, amount of di decent dialogue from um, from from um, Nick Stahl. Like I said, I don't think his John Connor was never that bad. I never understood the hate for for him. And then he mentions that he, he, he uh, Mike Kripke's basement because that's where the kids go to make out, right? When they were kids, so. Basically, so basically, the day before in T two, the day before he met um, Arnold, Tim and uh, Kate, they kind of made out in the in that what, what he meant what he mentioned. So, so they kind of they say because they said because he says we hooked up the day before I met him. So, and then and then uh, Kate's uh, fiance gets killed, and then take and takes on his takes on his form. And he did a, a good oh shit gory. I forgot like how gory the how sometimes the, a point this film is 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 big gory right. You know like how we see when we see when Arnold opens his chest up right. But the one thing that still gets me like, oh shit you know that still gets me with the oh shit where where the TX disguised as Scott the fiance right. They're driving with these two cops, and the TX goes and punches right through because he's in the back seat. So he goes and punches right through the driver. I'm like, oh, you know, that's like that. That's still a pretty gory death, you know. Goes and punches right through a guy, and then he goes and um, smashes the other cop's face into the window. But the whole just punching right through, and he takes it, and it's still right through him. So he goes and takes the wheel itself, you know, grabs the wheel to, to drive it. I'm like, oh, that's 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 pretty gory, you know. Goes and punches right through the guy. You know, kind of reminds me, you know, like reminds you know when um when Arnold in the first movie when he punches right through Brian Thompson. <coughs> yeah, when he punches right through through Brian Thompson to get his clothes, or another Arnold, or an Ar or in another Arnold movie, End of Days. Very underrated Arnold movie, one of my favorites. Or the devil, or they're on the subway train, and the devil just goes and punches right through the conductor. You know. Gre Punches his heart right throughout, you know. <laughs> that's another. Uh, that's another good gory effect as well. And it's the only. And it's the only horror film that Arnold. Well, I consider Terminator Two a horror film, though. But like, when he, when it's like a, in the story when he's dealing with the devil, you know, that's kind of like the only horror, real, real horror film he's done, basically. Because people consider Terminator science fiction, yes. But I always considered the first one the hor a horror film. But including like a, a legit horror film, End of Days is like the only one he's ever done. Like a, like a legit horror movie. So, but that was a good that was a good gory death though. So they go to the cemetery. They find Sarah's grave. They open up the coffin. It's full of weapons, and explains that how his mom died from leukemia, and. And then uh, uh, Kate tries to shoot uh, Arnold, but he goes and spits the bullet out, and he goes and says, "Don't do that." That's another one I did get a chuckle out of. So, and then, um, and then more, more good with, with um, Nick Stoll as John Car uh, John Connor, a more emotional part where he's choking it. Arnold picks him up like this, and he's like, "You're right. You're not the one I want. I'm wasting my time." And John goes, "Fuck you, fucking machine." And he puts him down and goes and says, better. <laughs> because he says that's basic psychology that's part of his programming. 
And then we get uh, the cameo by um, by Earl, Earl Byrne as Doctor Silverman from the first two movies. And then when he sees Arnold, he runs away, never to be seen again. And that's when Arnold tells that to, um, that Kate is part uh, helps form the core of the resistance with John, and says that that, that she's his future wife. And then the TX arrives, reveals itself that was originally Scott, and so. Arnold comes by with a freaking bazooka, shoots the TX, that was cool, bazooka fire, and then she jumps on top of the car, tries to saw through the top, she gets hit by, makes him get hit by a truck, her, um, the, um, cannon was damaged, so it chooses to be a flamethrower, and so they explain that, um, that's the, 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 the first attack by Skynet will, con- will commence later, will, com- will commence today. Judgment Day is going to be started in today. And so they have to get to Claire Danes' father, who <clears throat> think he's the key of shutting down Skynet. Barnell said he needs to protect these, he needs to protect the, the two, the main, two, the two um, main uh, people. And said that, you know, and saying that, you know, he says, it is your destiny. And I, I did like, another moment I like with the Nick Stoll, he goes and says, goes and says, fuck my destiny. It makes him think he's going to try to shoot himself, right? I just like when he goes and says, you know, fuck my destiny. <laughs> and he's like, you can't self-terminate. No, you can't. I can do whatever the hell I want. I'm a human being, not some goddamn robot. <laughs> Either we go to her father and start preventing this from, uh, shut down Sky and make this from ever happening, or so much for the great John Connor. Because your future, my destiny, I didn't want no part of it. I never want, I never was. I never did. <laughs> So you get another good moment from from uh, from Nick Stoll, but see so they drive oh they drive they're driving over to there, and um, exp- and uh, Arnold explains to to Claire Danes that um, she's uh, not only his 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 John's wife but is also second in command, and he she looks at him like no, you're a mess. <laughs> it's like and he goes hey you're not exactly my type either. And as in, also that um, Kate is also one in the future. She captured um, Arnold and um, reactivated him and sent through and, and sent him back. So she, so her future self, reprogrammed him and sent him back to, to the past. John couldn't because he was dead, saying that you know that Arnold killed him. So. And then, so by the time when they get there, um, Skynet has become self-aware. Claire, um, the TX shoots Dave, David Andrews, um, but he's still alive though. So the and you get some more good practical um, robot ro- robot effects, like these big huge robots with two Gatling guns, right? Well, well done, uh, well done effects. Animatronics, you could say, she's just mowing everybody down. Um, Arnold got another decent moment where he t- twists the head off of one, used one of the Gatling guns to shoot the shoot another one of those robots. Another decent moment as well. Um, they get they get they get these codes and they they have to go to Crystal Peak in this uh, facility. It's a, a fallout a fallout facility. And then you get with Arnold um, fighting the TX. I mean, decent a fight a decent. Decent fight, you know, like, like how she Arnold slams her to the toilet, or takes one of the urinals and just slams it against her, tries to kick her face in, and then you have the TX, you know, just picks him up and just goes and rams right through, and then, and then like how like how the TX kind of wraps itself around Arnold, tries to burn his face and kicks his head off, well not completely off, it's still attached though, but it's kind of dangling, so she used her like her. A machine control ability to um, try to uh, control him, and then uh, Claire Danes she gets a, she gets she gets a moment where she shoots one of the fly, one of the flying machines. She goes and takes one of the guns, just starts shooting it, destroys it, and John looks at her and is like, "What? Oh, nothing. You remind me of my mother." <laughs> so okay, she at least at least, at least uh, Claire Danes she gets she gets a moment to destroys one of the machines. And then they they try to make where they make the TX side get stuck on this big this big huge uh, ma- magnet. And then um, Arnold tries to um, you know he's trying to resist being controlled and um, and say you know 
uh, John Thomas, you don't want to do this. And Arnold saying, Desire is irrelevant. I am a machine. So, he can't do it, so he goes and breaks this vehicle to pieces, shutting himself down. So they get to the, so they get to Crystal Peak. They had, there's this code to open this big, uh, huge blast door. The TX gets there, but then Arnold gets there, and the CGI, the CGI of Arnold now he gets he's more no, he's more damaged because more of his robot form is showing, but he still has some of his face on, you know, saying I'm back. Uh, the CGI in him, how it looks right there, is still iffy on me. It still is. He tries to hold the door. Um, the TX um, is trying crawling. And you, I do get the nice, you do get the the nice mo. Uh, uh, me, the, me and my brother, me and my brother are still like, you know. He, he gets this moment where he takes his other fuel cell, right, shoves right in the TX's mouth, and goes and says, You are terminated. And then the look on the TX's face has that, you know, has that I'm fucked looked. Or, you're fucked. <laughs> Yeah, uh, me and my brother always like that. You know, he shoves it in his mouth and goes and says, "You are terminated." But so, like the, I, well, I like the moment. But you see the the CGI look on his face. You know, him showing more of the, the machine of him. It's still iffy on that though. But I still like that quote. You know, you are terminated. <laughs> so they both blow up. They get down there, but it's not really Skynet though. There is no system core. It's actually a fallout shelter for VIPs, right? So. They, they only let us down there because so they so those two can live. There is there is no, there was never stopping Skynet. They had to let it happen. So they hear a, a voice on the radio saying that you know the Connor he's the one who's in charge there, and then ends with the, um, Nick Stoll narrating that their destiny was never to stop Judgment Day. Although I did kind of like it, it was kind of a ballsy thing where they just let it happen. You know, Judgment Day actually does happen. I don't know, maybe it was the thing. It was kind of a ballsy thing where the, the war actually does happen, where all the nukes go off all around the world. So, and then, um, and then uh, um, Nick Stoll ending say, "Our battle has just begun." So yeah, so T three, rise of the machines. Yes, it, at least before it is a step down, a big step down for the from the first two. But I still think I I'll, I still think it was never a never a bad film at all. Um, it does it does have a, a decent a solid seventy percent on Rotten Tomatoes actually. Six point three on IMDb. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. Ugh. Shit. But anyway, I was saying, yeah, the score is much lower compared to, like, how the first film was 100% Rotten Tomatoes, and the second film was, um, has a, like, was a 91, 91% Rotten Tomatoes. But, yeah, I guess, the, yeah, the critics are more or less on, on, the, on this one, uh, less on this film, obviously, though, but 70% of Rotten Tomatoes is not that bad. I mean, I never thought this one was bad at all, like I said, seeing this back in the theater, this film was never that bad to me at all. Me and my brother can agree on, can agree on that on that one, right? Because we could both en enjoy um, this film. So, I mean, like I said, Arnold as a uh, yeah, his performance as a Terminator is definitely obviously a step down from this performance from, from the first two. Obviously, the whole talk to the hand I still don't like with the funky music playing. Um. But uh, some of the some of the humor was not funny though. But there was one, there was there was a few that I did get a chuckle out of though. Um, Nick Stoll, like I said, I never thought he was bad as John Con as John Connor. I thought he was a very decent John Connor. I think he was. I never got what was so bad about his performance about it about it about it about him. Claire Danes as Kate Brewster, I never thought she was bad either. Um. Christa, Christina Loken, I never thought she, I never thought she was bad as as the TX. Yeah, you know, not on the same level as Arnold or Robert Patrick, you know. But having uh, this time a female Terminator, I never thought that was bad either. You know, I think Christina Loken, she, she was, um, she was, uh, she did the best she could. She given she was given to do. I thought she was never that bad. I never thought she was. 
Um, like I said, the score is obviously is, is obviously a big step down. Mark from Mark Beltrame, definitely um, not on the same level compared to Brad Fordell's first two scores. Um, the effects by Stan Winston, I thought they were still I thought they were still decent. You know, good amount of practical effects with the huge uh, robots with the Gatling guns or when uh, Arnold, and, you know, opening his chest up. You know, there's still good practical stuff with Stan, with Stan Winston did. And the, the big huge car chase through the city, you know, with huge with the crane and all that. A lot of it actual done practical for real, except when the crane the crane vehicle flips up and it's still obvious bad CGI. Still, I do give it that though. But pretty much the whole chase scene, all done for real. You know, a lot of practical explosions and vehicles being destroyed, buildings being demolished, all done for real. That that's so that's that's obviously a big plus. I do appreciate for that. Really enjoy that scene. You know, good good gunfire as well. Like Arnold just goes rolls up with a bazooka, blasts the TX. Um. And some good some good um uh, dialogue from from Nick Stoll. You know, like how he's saying that um there's a catch. Something terrible has to happen. All the stuff Dave Grant. Not all not all that's gonna that's not gonna last. Or when he says, fuck my destiny. <laughs> like I said, I think Nick Stoll was, was, was a decent John Connor. I never thought he was bad at all. Um, so, and Jonathan Mostow, I thought he did decently for what he... I think he, I think he did a very decent job with this film. Uh, I like Breakdown. I didn't mind fi, uh, U571. But this one, I thought he was... I thought he did a pretty decent job with this film. And uh, nice to see David Andrews in there. As well, um, I like such. Me and my brother liked when you know at the end with with Arnold saying, "You are terminated." Boom. So, yeah. Overall, yeah. Ter uh, terminate. Yeah, there was a, there was like there was a lot of yeah. It's, like, it's flawed, and like I said, um, it's flawed because I, I kind of, how it made the ending of Terminator Two kind of pointless. You know, it kind of makes the whole leave all the uh, the no fate what we of what we make it kind of pointless. Saying that then, you know, Judgment Day is inevitable. It's gonna happen no matter what. That I did not care for though. But like I said, it can't be any worse than what Dark Fate did. You know, because that basically shits on T two even more. Yeah, I still, I still easily watch this better than Genesis or Dark Fate. And I probably say Christina Loken is a much better, much better Terminator than. What they did with John Connor in Genesis made him a Terminator, or that other one, um, the other guy's name. He's the guy who, in Dark Fate, the the the, the, the Terminator was the guy who played Ghost Rider from the um, Ag Agents of Shield TV show. That guy, Christina Loken, is much better than that Terminator. <clears throat> so. Yeah, so Terminator Three: Rise of the Machines. I never thought this was a bad movie. I think it's a very I watch it as a fun B movie. I can still, I, me and my brother can still watch this. To me, it was never that it was never that bad of a movie. Although it has features, um, one of the commentaries that uh, Arnold does in this movie, he does a commentary in this film. But obviously, the thing is, though, it's a shitty commentary. All he does is basically all he does is talk about the movie. Every scene by scene, he talks about. He doesn't talk about like other his other films or his performance in this, or he talks about how his performance in this film was good or not. All he does, but he, all he does is talk about the film frame by frame, scene by scene as the film is going along. That's all he does to talk about. So it's a very shitty commentary that he does. He doesn't talk about anything else. He doesn't talk about like, his other films or he doesn't talk about either his um the rep the reputation of this film. You just know he just just talks about the film as it's going along. So that's a commentary that was pretty shitty, you know, probably one of the shitty commentaries I've seen in a, in a while. But still, regardless of Terminator Three: Rise of, the Rise of the Machines, I still think it was a very, um, a very um, decent movie. I still think it is. Never that bad to me. I never hated this film. So, but it's Terminator Three. Thanks for watching, and um, if you're wondering if. If I review, uh, I don't have, I don't have the other movies, so I'll very, I'll go to stop it here until I get them and watch them. But thing is though, Salvation I can review though, but it's gonna be a very, it's gonna be a chore to sit through to watch Genesis and Dark Fate. It's gonna be such a chore and torture to watch. 
that's why I, I, I don't have those sequels. I don't have Salvation either, so... I mean, yeah, I could watch it online, though, but... I always best because because I have the DVDs that show it to be part of my collection, though, so... So I'm going to hold off of there because I basically want to review the first three anyway, because those are the, the only good, really good ones of the series. So I'll have to hold off until uh, on the rest of for for later. But other than that, though, hope you like me reviewing this the the, the first trilogy of the Terminator series. Until the next time when I review the rest, though. But anyway, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, and we'll see you next time on the next movie review. Later.